here to worship the Lord in his house. And we are singing a shout to the Lord, and I think a lot of you know that song. So if you would stand with me and sing, I believe the words are on the screen for you this morning.
couple uh, that I want to call special attention to is uh, they are uh, we're switching our study in uh, the 403 small group the 403 small group uh, meets in the gathering uh, room at, at 6 30 on Wednesdays and we're doing love does this is a book by Bob Golf uh, and uh, it would be well worth uh, your time. Uh, basically, what we ask folks to do is just bring uh, a snack to share or uh, some refreshments to share. And we get together, we pray together, we uh, share together, and uh, we, we study together. So it would be great to have you. Uh, also, uh, there is the National Day of Prayer that's coming up on uh, Thursday and uh, there will be a special coming together of brothers and sisters uh, from all over the county uh, for uh, an event at 4.30 uh, at the courthouse. Uh, so please be aware of that. And then I think that covers that. Are you ready for good news? Yes. Are you really ready for good news? Yes. That's a little more enthusiastic. Uh, the good news is that our Savior is alive. Jesus is alive. And because He lives, we can live also. Because He lives, we have hope. Uh, because He lives, uh, we find grace and mercy. And brothers and sisters, He is here to meet us at the point of our need today. Would you bow with me for a word of prayer? Lord God, we welcome you. We welcome you into this service. We welcome you into our time together. Lord, come and minister. Come and speak words that are true, words that are helpful. God, give us ears to hear what you're saying. And Lord, for all these things, we'll give you praise and thanks. For it's in your name that we pray. Amen. Now we you stand and we'll sing uh, for the beauty of the earth. We'll sing four verses. Praises. Uh, one is 
uh, that uh, little uh, Rowan Lee Calhoun was born yesterday morning uh, and named after her late grand great grandfather. Um, this is actually Debbie. Raise your hand. That's a great aunt. <laughs> All right. Uh, then a concern, uh, Rowan has a, a minor issue and is in the NICU unit uh, at the Children's Hospital in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. So we want to pray uh, for that to be resolved. And then uh, Debbie also uh, wanted to thank us for all uh, the prayers and cards during, during this time uh, when we lost Russell. And uh, we need to pray for uh, my mother-in-law too as she had just uh, being alone after 63 years. You, some of you know what an adjustment that is. Uh, for our son Ben and his wife, uh, Meredith, uh, Meredith, and uh, they have COVID and she's sick also. Well, he has COVID and, and she's sick. Also, please pray for a cousin who just lost her 34 year old son. So, uh, pray for that. And then uh, we also want to pray uh, for uh, uh, Virginia's uh, cousin Susie, who's in respite care, and her 18-year-old grandson, who recently tested positive with lung cancer. So, uh, and actually, uh, I misunderstood that the prayer uh, for Ben was uh, Virginia and Bill's son. Uh, and I was thinking it was uh, the Stooky son. Uh, Lori Gentry, uh, this is from Lori Gentry. Please pray for a family friend, Tom uh, Poland. He will be having surgery to remove uh, cancer in his esophagus. So we want to uh, pray for that. And then Wendy and Jeff, praise for graduates. Uh, Lydia Martin, who graduated from IU in elementary ed. Elliot Jones. Uh, from uh, IU in elementary ed, Trevor Craig from Purdue in construction management. Uh, graduation is next weekend. Lydia and Elliot are staying in Bloomington to teach. So they've got teaching jobs in Bloomington. They will. They go for second interview next, this next week. Okay. So we need to pray for a second interview to go really well. Uh, and then Trevor's going to be in Indianapolis. Job and she has a job. Okay, so that's great. Uh, then we received word, uh, or I received word today from Debbie Myers that Bill actually is back at Lakeland, but he has been diagnosed with COVID. And, and so if we want to pray for Bill Myers. Uh, Bill is the oldest member of the church by far at 101 years old. So uh, we just want to uh, lift Bill up. Then we have just the other regular uh, prayer requests uh, the Beyond the Walls ministry that we're praying for is the Faith Health Clinic. The local ministry prayer focus is the soundboard team. Uh, the staff person focus is Amber Stevenson. Uh, the cluster prayer focus is uh, Pastor Mike Hafferty and the Alvarado United Methodist Church. And then the church in the area that we're praying for is uh, Pastor Tom Smith and Chapel of the Lakes. So uh, let's be praying for all those. Would you uh, join with me in singing the prayer song? We'll sing uh, two verses.
again. Offer our praises. We can come and, and confess, uh, Lord, where we've failed you in word and deed and thought in our motivations this week. We can come and, Lord, give you thanks for the ways that you've worked in our lives. trespasses against us 
and lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please come forward to receive the Lord's tithes and our offerings. There's a basket in front of the communion table for the offering. offering today. With it, we worship you and give our whole selves to you. Please now take it and use it for your kingdom and your glory. May it be a great blessing to many. We ask all this in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen.
Please stand for the reading of the scripture. Let us pray. Our merciful God, who is pleased to speak to us through your word, grant us all grace that we may not be mere hearers of your word, but doers also. Give us the grace of your Holy Spirit that we may believe what has been proclaimed to us. Amen. Today's scripture reading is from Galatians 5, verses 16 through 26, which is found on page 1,222 in your pew Bible. So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other, so that you are not to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. The acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, and faith faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking, and envying each other. This is the word of the Lord.
get a new one. Anyone I've ever had. <laughs> okay. Anybody else? Something for Carolyn. Somebody who tries to engage me in conversation before my first cup of coffee. Oh. <laughs> Somebody, did you hear that? Somebody that tries to engage in conversation uh, before the first cup of coffee. <laughs> Someone else, what did you all? Distracted drivers. Distracted drivers. <laughs> When they're on their phone. When they're on their phone and driving. Okay. They can't make it around the mound. Or they can't make it around the mound. <laughs> We're coming into the season where folks won't know how to drive around the mound. So, I, I'm sure. How many have ever been aggravated at the mound? Some of you are lying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but the, that the mail sparked it. You know, you know, we got angry at the mail. Anybody else? Repeating the same thing four times. Repeating the same thing four times. But sometimes you need to. I thought you were talking about the meat for a second. <laughs> that takes me off when Debbie serves that. <laughs> you never have, Debbie, honey. Loud chewers. Loud, loud chewers. Loud chewers. Okay. Like shushing? No, like they chew. Oh, loud chewers. <laughs> I, I misunderstood you. I'm sorry. Loud chewers. <laughs> Somebody else said something. Internet providers. Internet providers. <laughs> yeah. Well, we can go on and on all day. Uh, anger can get us into trouble. Can anybody ever got in trouble because you were angry? She broke a vacuum. She. <laughs> <laughs> that was you. <laughs> you mellowed since then. <laughs> Um, we say the wrong things when we're angry. Things that we regret. We do wrong things when we're angry. Uh, let me tell you about something that happened when I was a kid. Um, my brother and I were two years apart. Um, probably perfect for not getting along and fussing and fighting with each other. Um, and um, my brother, uh, Scott, knew me better than anybody else, but he could tick me off quicker than anybody else. Anybody have a sibling like that? Yeah. And we were out um, by the school, uh, the, the middle school that was uh, right by our house in Selma. And uh, we were playing with uh, some friends. We were both fairly young, probably uh, 10 and 8 maybe, uh, something like that. And Scott made me mad. Well, I made Scott mad. Uh, I, I had the spiritual gift of irritation. <laughs> Irritated him frequently. And he said, if I had your glasses, I'd take them and scrape them on the sidewalk. <laughs> well, you mean, no, me being as smart as I am, took off my glasses, <laughs> handed them to him, and he went like that. I was angry, Scott was angry, and I got a new pair of glasses out of it. <laughs> we do stupid stuff, dumb stuff, uh, when we're angry. But I want you to know that like all the other emotions, anger is a God-given emotion. We are created in the image of God. The scripture talks to, to us about uh, times that God was angry. We see that Jesus was angry at times in, in the New Testament, right? In the Gospels. Um, we are created in the image of God. And, and uh, our emotions, uh, including anger, uh, can make us um, 
passionate people. Help us to live uh, passionately. Uh, and, uh, you, you know, there are some, uh, and, and maybe somebody here is in that situation. You're um, on medicine to kind of level you out because your highs are way too high and your lows are way too low. Uh, and one of the things that I hear from folks that are on medicine is that they, everything just seems the same. Uh, you, you know, that, that, that they miss the highs. So they don't miss the lows so much, but they miss the highs. And God's created us to live passionately uh, and with purpose. And I will say this, that, that anger uh, can be used for good or for ill. For instance, when we get angry about injustice, I think we're getting angry about things that, uh, something that God's angry about. Anger uh, fueled uh, the anti-slavery movement before the Civil War. Anger fueled uh, the development of child uh, labor laws because folks thought that little kids going to work in factories just wasn't right. Anger fueled the suffrage movement. Anger fueled uh, the civil rights movement. Uh, you, you know, so it it isn't always wrong to be angry. I, I think we ought to pray, Lord, uh, pray, Lord, help me be angry about the things that you're angry about. Help my heart to be glad about the things that make your heart glad. Now, like all of our emotions, anger has been distorted by sin. And I would say this, most of the time when I'm making a confession for myself, it may be true of you, but I'm making a confession uh, for myself. Most of the time when I've gotten really angry, I've regretted it. Um, you know, there's an injunction in Ephesians chapter 4 that says, Be angry and sin not. Frequently when I'm angry, I'm angry and I really do sin. Um, and, and so, uh, like all of our emotions, uh, anger has been distorted by sin and it can be incredibly destructive. It can ruin relationships. It can ruin potential. Uh, you, you know, it's... It's something that we have to guard against. And, and actually, in Proverbs, we're warned over and over again about being angry. Now, I came across a sermon by a guy named Alan Scott. don't know anything about him, but what he uh, wrote in this sermon. And, and he gave some truths about anger. And, and, and I thought they resonated pretty well. Uh, one is we're often angry uh, for the wrong reasons. Everybody that would agree with that, say amen. amen. We are often angry at the wrong people. Amen. 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 And how many How many have gotten really angry at work or at school and you've come home and you've taken it out on those closest to you? Or you've kicked the dog. <laughs> We're often angry in the wrong ways, everybody. Amen. Then he says, we get angry too easily. This is probably, uh, especially when I was a young parent, this is probably where I failed most. Because my kids were always spilling stuff. <laughs> and that would mean that I'd have to clean it up. And it irritated me. And uh, we, we get angry too easily. Um, we get angrier than we should. You know, when somebody gets angry about something, and, and it seems like it's a relatively small thing, it may not be that small thing that they're angry about. It may be something that they're dealing with that they haven't expressed that they've stuffed, and it just kind of erupts. <laughs> at that. Um, it's the straw that broke the camel's back, for instance. And then we stay angry too long. Um, 
Some of us have become angry and we've stayed angry for years and even decades. And God doesn't want us to live like that. If we are in bondage to anger in our lives, uh, know this, that Jesus came to set us free. Now, what, uh, I, I thought about this last night as I was working on the sermon or yesterday afternoon, uh, discerning uh, between bad and good anger. What is, uh, is my anger harming or helping? It, you know, when uh, folks were angry about uh, children, uh, little kids going to work, uh, you, you know, and having to work in factories, having to work 12-hour uh, days in factories, that, that uh, I think, uh, is, was helpful anger. But a lot of times, our anger does uh, a, a lot of harm. Uh, is my anger self-focused or others-focused? By that I mean, it, am I angry because of what's happening to me? Or am I angry about injustice or mistreatment uh, of others? Immediate response uh, versus delayed response. You know, um, the scripture that uh, Lord read talked about outburst of rage, uh, flying off the handle, throwing a hissy fit, a temper tantrum. When, when we just react immediately without engaging our head, we're likely to be doing more harm uh, than good. Anger, the difference between good anger and or bad anger and good anger is not being, not having prayed through the situation and, and praying through the situation. Uh, it, it, the difference between uh, bad anger and good anger is out of control versus out of control. Bringing yourself under subjection to God. Now, you and I are called to be like Jesus, aren't we? Everybody say amen. That's true. We're called to be like Jesus. Actually, when Jesus asked his disciples to follow him, he was inviting them into a relationship where they uh, would learn to uh, do the things that he did, uh, say the things that he said, uh, think about things the way that he thought about them. It was a rabbi-disciple relationship, and, and the Lord has called us to follow him, and God's great goal in all of our lives is for us to be more like Jesus. And Jesus was like his Father in heaven, and actually, Jesus says to uh, Philip, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Now, being like Jesus doesn't mean uh, that we won't get angry. Jesus was angry at the right times for the right reasons. He was angry when he cleansed the temple. He was angry uh, when his disciples got in the way of the little kids coming to him, the parents bringing the little kids to him. He was angry at the hard-heartedness uh, of uh, the religious folks when, uh, when on a Sabbath uh, there was a guy with a hand that needed to be healed and, and they didn't want him to heal it because it was the Sabbath. He uh, was angry at their hard hearts. We're, we're called to be like Jesus. Somebody said, uh, and, and I don't know who said this, but somebody said, I am unable to commit to any Messiah who doesn't knock over tables. Who doesn't work to set things up right. Who doesn't work for, for justice. For folks being treated fairly. That's what the whole cleansing of the temple was about. Uh, the uh, folks had turned uh, the court of the Gentiles where uh, only the, that was as far as the Gentiles could go in the temple. And, and it was where they and, and, and they turned it into a marketplace. And, and Jesus uh, 
Uh, in all four Gospels, he cleanses the temple. In, in three of them, he, he cleanses it. it it's pictured uh, uh, that he cleanses it uh, on the week uh, of the uh, Holy Week, uh, at, on, on Palm Sunday. Right as he was coming into Jerusalem. Now in Mark, he looks at the temple, then he goes out, and then he comes back the next day and cleanses the temple. In John's Gospel, uh, the cleansing of the temple happened, he places it early in Jesus' ministry, and Jesus, it says, made a cord of whips. A, uh, a whip of cords, I should say. Basically, uh, made this whip and then he chased folks out of the temple. But to make a, a whip of cords took some time. He was thinking about things. The scripture says over and over again that the Lord is compassionate, gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. I've just given you one reference here. Uh, this description of God is referred to over and over again. And, and I think it's a description of Jesus. Jesus uh, is compassionate and gracious, uh, slow to anger and abounding in love. That slow to anger means, means patient, patient, forbearing, long-suffering. Now, we need to ask ourselves, am I that way? Could they say about me? Could they say about me? Tim is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in love. See, if I'm to become more and more like Jesus, that should be more and more a description that someone could use of me. It's kind of quiet in here. Are you with me? <laughs> Not asleep? <laughs> You're away. <laughs> Slow to anger means being patient. Actually, some of the words, uh, one of the reasons that I wanted Lori to read the scripture she did is that it uh, talks about these works of the flesh, including outburst of anger, outburst of rage, and then it describes the fruit of the Spirit. And uh, one of the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. Love, joy, peace. See, I'm being patient with you. Love, joy, peace. Love, joy, peace. And patience can be described. I, I checked out different English versions. Uh, patience can be described long-suffering, forbearance, Tolerance, not giving up, sticking with it, great heartedness. In other words, God wants us to be patient with each other. I think that God also wants us to be patient with ourselves. Sometimes we're our own worst enemies. We're quick to be angry with ourselves. Now, we are responsible to guard our hearts. In uh, John 14.1, uh, Jesus tells his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. In Proverbs 4.23, uh, that I've been uh, using in my devotions, I've been confessing this, uh, you, you know, claiming this verse, Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows out of it. In other words, we need to guard our hearts against the wrong kind of anger. And, uh, and, and so, uh, I believe that there are some things that we can do uh, to help us do that. And here's some hints about dealing, I think, faithfully and fruitfully with anger. First of all, 
be careful about who you hang out with. You know, uh, emotions are contagious, and that includes anger. Actually, in Proverbs uh, 22, verses 24 and 25, it says this. Do not make friends with a hot-tempered person. Do not associate with one easily angered, or you may learn their ways and get yourself ensnared. We become like those that we spend uh, a lot of time with. And uh, you know what? I'd like to be more joyful, so I'm going to look for some joyful folks uh, to be around rather than uh, folks that are angry all the time. Because emotions are contagious. Now, that may also mean that we've got to watch what we... We've got to be careful about what we watch on TV. How many have ever gotten angry at a news show? <laughs> now, I don't know whether you're Fox fans or CNN fans or uh, whatever. Uh, if you're watching something that's irritating you to death and just causing you to boil, turn it off! <laughs> the world will go on! I mean, we need to be informed, we need to know generally what's happening, but that doesn't mean, that doesn't mean that we need to be watching it 24-7. Yeah. <laughs> we probably need to be careful about social media. You, you know, I've got a Facebook account, um, but if you look at, at my Facebook account, I think the last time I responded to anything was like my birthday, back in December. Because one of the things I've learned about Facebook is folks say stuff on uh, Facebook that seems stupid to me. <laughs>
when you're golfing and you miss a shot, it's probably not God honoring to wrap your uh, uh, wrap your club around a tree. So we need to pray and ponder a God pleasing response. And then I, I would say this also in Ephesians it says, "Don't let the sun go down on your wrath." Now, there have been issues that Heavy and I have dealt with in our married life that we haven't been able to resolve and we've both uh, been upset about and we couldn't resolve it in a day. But we endeavored not to go to bed mad. We endeavored to deal with it and the way that we deal with it is with truth and grace. Grace and truth. And uh, that leads me to the last point. Rely on God's grace. In um, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9, it says, My grace is sufficient for you. Now, God's grace is sufficient in that if we've blown it, if we've lost our temper, if we've... Uh, been destructive with our anger, there's forgiveness of him. God's grace can cover that. We need to confess it, but then God's grace kicks in. God's grace is also available to help us to do the right thing, to help us to live in the right way, to help us not to kick the vacuum cleaner. <laughs> or the dog. God's grace is both for dealing with the past and living in the here to help us to do the next faithful thing. And that's what this meal is all about. See, Jesus. Suffered and he died. Does everyone have a, a little cup and a piece of bread? If you need a little cup or a piece of bread, uh, let us know and we'll get it to you. Um, Joe needs some. Uh, there's a basket uh, over there too. And. Um, This meal, of course, commemorates Jesus' death and res resurrection. This dying on the cross for us. And uh, the bread represents his body, which was broken for us. The cup represents his blood, which was shed for us, for the forgiveness of sin. Jesus instructed us as often as we take of the bread and the cup to remember what he's done for us. This is a meal that is a, if you want to draw closer to Jesus, uh, this meal is for you. You don't need to be a member of this church. Uh, this meal is for you. Would you bow with me for a word of prayer? Lord Jesus, we love you. We give you praise and glory and honor. Lord, we pray that you would pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of the bread and the cup. May they be for us the body and the blood of Christ so that we might be the body of Christ for a world that desperately needs you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters, would you take the piece of bread? And as you take it, would you remember that his body was broken for you? Now, would you take the cup? And would you remember that his blood was shed for you for the forgiveness of sins? And that in His grace we find the power to live as well. Lord, we thank
thank you for your grace. Lord, help us to live as followers of you. Help us to live as Christians. Lord. All these things we ask in your name for your sake. Amen. Will you uh, stand with me, please? We're going to sing, uh, Lord, I Want to Be a Christian. It's actually number 402 in your hymnal, Lord, I Want to Be a Christian. <coughs> Amen. Have a great week.